We are in one of the Bering shipyards. Yeah. One of the seven sheds here. We are on Bering 121. Alexi was showing us progress on the 280 sitting there and the 121. And we just realized like this was so interesting. We had to film it. So we rolled the cameras and decided that even though this wasn't supposed to be us filming, we're just going to do it because we think you guys are going to get a kick out of this as much as we do. He kept showing us pieces of like underneath the skin of the boats. That's how I felt. Everything that's not an organ, not like an engine, not a skin, which is basically the hull, everything in between. Because but you're not seeing is... it when the boat is finished. Exactly. So you that only is... see it in, the... in this stage. In this, in this stage. stage. Yeah. There's a few different stages, right? And each boat is in a different stage. So anyway, what blew us away, we could even start because we both well, didn't Well, I, I, I was actually not 100% aware of this. I thought it's just going to be some like flooring tiles or something and then the teak is going on top and done. But I just realized, if you see here, this is the metal, right? Yep. The aluminum. Yep. And then you put fairing on top. Yes. It's a must because aluminum is uneven and we yep. have to make it perfectly level for teak to be on an absolutely flat surface, otherwise it will be cavities and water will come in. So we make it 100% flat. So the teak can now be installed on this here? Yeah. First it's like a bedding or adhesive, mm -hmm. and then it's Sika Flex and teak. I saw another thing. Look at all this here. You put the thread in. Yeah, it's for the railing. So it's a stainless steel bolt. 316 and it's the steel plate which we saw on your boat uh-huh so they're thick they're like 10 mm thick yeah and you put stainless steel bolt through the stainless steel thread for the railings for the railings and you never will have a rusty rings around them which people like to brush with toothbrush <laughs> i heard these stories <laughs> oh yeah it's exactly what some happened. people love it you guys because I've also never seen this before and that's also never really seen afterwards right? yeah this is the support for the David so you see how many elements you have one plate on top one plate backing and then this is all reinforcement Wow! so it's a massive reinforcement for just crane so that all gets put in here and then the tea goes yeah then it's gonna be again fair then tea goes over Wow. What else can we you check? You will never right. see it. You will never this see it. It's a good chance to see it. Underneath the skin. Underneath the All right, skin. What else can we show? What else underneath Definitely the skin? Definitely the engine room. You can see the engine room here and then we can step on bearing 80 and we can see some piping there too. Let's do it. That's a good stage. Oh, it's a big step. Yeah. This is the passerelle. It's a passerelle step. It's a work in progress here. It's a bit messy, but it's a good time to see all this piping. See, it's all different pipes. The yellowish, it's a copper nickel ferrum. It's a seawater pipes. The stainless, it's a fuel pipes. So you can see many tanks. We're staying on some tanks many different tanks day tanks sludge tanks something else tanks the there's like four used people, oil four new people, oil four people working in here there's too. a lot of tanks yeah actually yeah. <laughs> yeah so you can see here is our sea chests so alexi on the 72 65 piping looks like this yeah under 24 meters under 20 this is meters. 121 footers look so. we have one standard we don't buy special piping the for bearing standard. under 24 <laughs> <laughs> different piping for over 24 it's all standard the only diameters is changing yeah. you know like on the smaller boats of course it's smaller diameters it's all commercial it's top quality materials top quality connections and everything who's alrighty guys let's talk about the difference between hoses and piping out of my experience dealing with boats we managed most of the boats we know have the majority of lines as hoses so we're talking about sanitary lines gray water lines drain lines um, it's usually with the majority of production boats it's hoses hoses have a shelf life not just that they're deteriorating at some point and start leaking way before that starts releasing the smell of whatever is inside the hose. So now if you think about a shower drain 
drains in general, even the high quality hoses, which not all shipyards are using, out of my experience, European production boats, American production boats, doesn't matter where they're built in the world. Most importantly, black water going from the head to the tank through the pumps, if it's a vacuum flush, if it's a macerator pump, whatever it might be, goes through a hose to the tank. We have been on so many different boats and most of the time an older boat has a little bit of a smell. If it's not a black water smell, then it is a fuel smell, like the diesel smell which comes through. Going to fixed piping, like solid piping, uh, whichever different material of piping it is for the different application, could be uh, PVC piping, could be stainless steel piping, could be copper ferrum or whatever it's called. I, <laughs> I always mix that up, but um, I know Bering is using that for um, all the seawater, for example, because it is not corroding. It makes a massive, massive di difference. The downside of it is it's way more cost and it is way more labor intense than pulling a hose from A to B. The majority of properly built super yachts in, in the Netherlands, in Germany, in Turkey, the rest of the world as well, in the US, properly built super yachts will use piping and not hoses. For me personally, it's the biggest turnoff going on any kind of vessel, no matter if it is a 40 foot vessel, if it is a 200 foot vessel, you walk inside, you go down below, it might be nice and cool because the air condition is blasting, we have that smell inside the boat. When you compare that to a high-end home, for example, you don't expect in a high-end home to have that sort of smell inside unless something is broken. I'm a huge fan of, of piping. I think it's gonna go a long way in the um, long run of the boat and the, in the, the older the boat is getting, the more it's gonna be important. Even though hoses are easier for the manufacturer to install, it's definitely gonna be more difficult to replace them down the line because at some point, you know, just uh, sometimes hoses start smelling a year, two years after built, especially if, uh, you know, look, looking at smaller catamarans, for example, where you have salt water still getting used for the toilets to be flushed. That is already getting very smelly in the first place. Now put, you know, number one and number two in the mix, uh, it makes it even worse. So if you're gonna replace these hoses and the tanks which are, you know, inside the walls because they're gravity fed, it is a huge undertaking to replace this. And um, not every manufacturer is thinking about the down the line, you know, replacing of these, um, of these hoses. So they don't make it easy. So yes, piping is the way to go if you wanna build a serious boat. Who's the poor guy with the label all this stuff? <laughs> oh, it's by the way, it's all it's all label. Like it's in the textbook. On the old boats, which is commission, it's yeah. usually labeled, you know, at the last moment. Which language? No, it's all symbols and colors. You have a direction of floor, and by color and symbol, you can see is it uh, chilled water or it's hot water or it's something else. You can see. It. International language. It's international, by the way. Yes. Yeah. And in terms of cables and whatever, like if anything is labeled, it would be with an English language? Of course, the English, yeah. Exhaust valves? Yeah, it's exhaust. It's a wet exhaust. We're so doing cool. on all boats now under 24, we're doing wet exhaust like on Super Yacht. Yeah. My approach, I would like to show exactly what we do. There is no yeah. secret. It's so important because I treat this craft same as aircraft. We cannot be on the water without it. If it's, it's not reliable, you're screwed. Yeah. You're dead. Same like you are without aircraft in 10,000 meters, 10 miles out and shore. It's, same it's, result. It's also life or death. If no yeah. one's around, it's life or death. Yes, and people who buy boats or who building them for whatever reason, they don't appreciate this fact. And they put their life in risk, they making substandard work, not realizing they put it somebody's lives in risk, they wouldn't do it if they would think about it. This is why I really want to show what we do. We have nothing to hide, we don't cut any corners, we do things by the book, so people can see it and if they want to buy a boat, at least they can ask the right questions. They know what they're buying. I mean, they can ask other builders, do you do this, do you do that? All right, let's do it. 80, here we come. Yep. One of the 80s. Oh, that's my lucky number, 14. It's 
next to the 121 bearing 80 under construction, slightly behind in the stage. So it's a good example. We can see it. First of all, the thickness of the bulwark of bearing 80, it's nearly one foot. After fairing and everything, it's one foot. You see how useful it is. We have all car compartment. Everything is storage, 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 because it's massive. So here we see the example of ventilation. What is this? It's a proper ventilation. I've never seen this. I don't know what that is. So it's a bowl, like if the water level rise. Yeah. So this bowl is floating and shutting down the oh. vent. So the water will never come to your fuel, to your fresh water, to your anything. Wow. So I've never seen this This before. looks serious. It's the way it should be. It's like a commercial. It looks normal for commercial yeah. or charter class boat, which is commercial. So you don't put just a little vent on the outside like a little, no? <laughs> don't insult the man. You can see the diameter. It's hard to get holes of this it's diameter. It's crazy. Guys, it's a ship. It's a ship. Don't take it as a boat. Take it as a ship. It's a ship. Yeah. All interiors, it's box-in-box -box technology. All the interior attached through the suspension to the metal structure. So you can see the base for the flooring. It's have a silomer, this green rubbery thing is called silomer, produced in Australia, expensive, but very good suspension. It's effective. It's effective, yeah, it's absorbed all the vibration. So this is the sound barrier. This void is a natural sound barrier. On top of this, we have a sandwich. I know, I've seen that sandwich. It's 80 millimeters. It's several layers of sound deck materials. Of so it's on top of this? On top of this, yes. It's wow. sitting on top of this. No wonder but you have to build tall you, boats. You can see this boat is still going to be tall. We have 50 mm on the ceiling and 80 more there. So still plenty still, of headroom. It's 220, 225. Yeah. It's good headroom. What is this? This is the sub interior and you see how it's attached to the oh, metal wow. structure. Again, through the rubbery substance silomer, it's not connected. Interiors are not directly connected to the interior. Alexia, the boats would be so much more spacious if you wouldn't do this. <laughs> but it would be not as comfortable. <laughs> yes, we... We're losing some space, but the boat is still spacious. Please don't change anything. Speaking of the wall thickness, an interior designer recently asked me, why do you need that watertight door in the front bulkhead? And I was like, what do you mean? You need it for safety. She was like, well, what's the point? It just takes away from all the space. And so many other boats, bigger than yours, don't even have it. And I was like, well, there's a difference between building an, a luxury coastal cruiser or a proper Explore yacht and we are building a proper explore yacht so if we are out there cruising and nobody could come to our rescue we're in a remote area and something catastrophic happens and we hit something and the water is coming in and that front watertight bulkhead could be locked up the boat will stay afloat and we will survive and that is extremely important and to me it's more important than having this wider walkway, a bigger door coming into the cabin. I think having that concept of safety built into your vessel is so important. And as much as I love interior, which is open and spacious, I just think safety is more important than that. So I'm with Alexei, don't compromise that, keep it that way. That is very, very important. Even if the boat is not built to the class, but it's built this way, it's built to the safety standard of bearing, I'm all with it. I think that is just amazing that they do this for the vessels under 24 meters. I absolutely love that. Same thing with the thickness of the walls. Yes, we would have more interior space if he didn't make this kind of effort, but we will hear each other more, it will be louder, there will be squeaking, there will be things that you just don't have on the bearing. It's just silent. And that comfort that you feel like you're just cruising in a house is something which is what really attracted Rico and I <laughs> to, to actually building one.